welcome back to part four in our series where we are talking about the Power BI uh, Python library that is used to work with the Power BI REST API. In our last video, we spent a little bit more time to talk about just authentication, making sure that your application you have registered is going to work as expected. And one of the big things is making sure that it has access to the correct workspace, depending on the type of license you have. So now that we've done that, we're gonna go into our next type of resource. Our next type of resource is called reports. Reports are basically just dashboards that are ready for other people to look at. And so to give you an idea of, I guess, what a report would look like, um, if you go to your main page, you'll see usually the type of object that you're working with. So some are um, workspaces, some are specifically dashboards, and then some are, well, sorry, not that one. Uh, let me do this one, maybe this one. Okay, maybe not that one. Well, we'll just keep it there. But anywho, so you have dashboards, you have reports, you have a workspace. And so if you look at reports and you click them, they're basically very similar to um, a dashboard, but you're able to then um, edit them and then you can add in new visuals and, and stuff like that. So it's, it's really fun. Uh, and then on top of that, sorry, I, I don't want to, I don't want to make it where I am on this view. I want to make sure I'm on the other one. I changed my screen size so that way people could see it. But anywho, um, this would be what you would see normally with a report. And so things with reports is that you can export them. So you're able to export them to Excel, PDF, and PowerPoint. Um, you're also able to, uh, write them as a, PBIX file, so like a Power BI file and stuff like that. And so that's what we're going to basically be showing how to do today is how to get reports, how to delete reports, how to clone reports, how to you know download report files. And then we'll talk a little bit at the end about um, one of the restrictions if you don't have the right type of account. So we'll save that till last. Now, at this point, everything is pretty much identical to our previous videos. The only thing that really is changing at this point is instead of now using the dashboard service, we're going to be using the report service. And so, again, everything should be well documented where you can just look at the doc strings and know kind of how to start using that. And then what I'm going to do is I already have the code laid out just because I don't want to remember all the <laughs> IDs to put it nicely. But one of the most basic operations you can do is you can get all the reports in a the user's default workspace. So if I run this, you'll see that you'll have uh, a list of reports. And so you'll have the app, you'll have the data set ID, you'll have the report ID is owned by me, uh, and then the name, report type, and so on and so on. So obviously, depending on the report, you might get slightly different information like this one, for example, doesn't have an app ID. But that is probably the most basic operation, which is just grab all my reports that belong to my default workspace. I can specify that I only want to return the reports for a specific workspace. So this one is a workspace that I have, I think, I think this is my, I think this is my regular one. Let me check. Yeah, so this is just my regular workspace. So I guess this is also my default workspace, to be honest, too. Um, but I think with this one, it's going to probably return the same stuff. Oh, no, it didn't. OK. Yeah, so this one is a workspace. So this is one of my I think it's just my Sigma coding workspace. But this is how you would return all the reports for a specific workspace. You would be get group report. So a lot of times in the documentation you see group, group just simply is a workspace. Hopefully that doesn't, you know, confuse people. If you want, you could grab a specific uh, report from our default workspace. So I have a report that has this ID that is in my default workspace. So if I wanted to, I could grab just that, that report. And so that will return that one. Now, naturally, if I can do it with my default workspace, I should be able to do it with a specific workspace. Well, that's also the case as well. I can specify that I want to grab that same report from my default workspace, but I also now have provided the workspace ID or the group ID for that specific report. 
So even though you might have a default workspace, which is defined by me, you also have a workspace ID that is defined, that is also associated with your workspace or my workspace, if I had to put it in like terms that would, I guess, make sense. So again, this should return the exact same report just because it's literally the same thing. The only thing is you're gonna notice is that your URLs have changed from me to now that specific group. Okay, so that is grabbing a specific report. Reports are made up of pages. So you can also grab specific pages from a report. So in this situation, I'm gonna grab all the pages from that report that I just pulled. So in this situation, I'm now gonna get page resources. So I have a report section, I have a display name, the order, and then the name. And then this one is the page two, order two. So this one is made up of two pages and then um, they have an order and then a display name. Now you can also do the same thing with a group. So you can say, hey, in this workspace, I have a report and I wanna grab all the pages from that report. Same logic here. So again, I have two pages. Now I can also grab specific pages from a report, right? And that naturally makes sense because there's a hierarchy here and hopefully that's kind of like becoming a reoccurring theme here. But in this situation, I would call the get page method. I would pass through my report ID and then I need to pass through the page name. So the name of the page that I want to return. In this situation, that name is right here. So it was not the display name, it's the name. So if I run this one, I now have just that specific page resource. Now again, if I can do it in my default workspace, I can do it in a specific workspace. So in this situation, it's gonna be get group page. I'm gonna add one extra argument, which is the group ID, and that identifies the workspace where the report exists. So again, I'm getting the same exact output. Very important, very consistent, hopefully. Now, with reports, you can also clone reports. Clones basically just means copy, right? So if I wanted to, I could clone my report. So I can specify the report that I want to clone, and then I can specify the name of that new cloned report. Now, there are some other uh, pieces of information in here. So for example, I could clone it to a specific workspace. So maybe, for example, I have a report that is in my regular Power BI Pro license workspace, but I wanna clone that one over to my premium per user license, right? So that's something you can also do with the clone method is you could technically specify a specific workspace. You would just be saying the target workspace ID. Hopefully, again, that, that makes sense. Now this one, we're gonna clone it and then I'm gonna do and delete it right away. Okay, so it looks like it cloned it. So let's take a look and see what it looks like. Wow, look at that. So cool, right? <laughs> it's nothing super fancy, but it's okay. <laughs> oh, that's actually kind of cool. I like that. Oh, I spoke too soon. That actually looks kind of nice. Um, you can also do it for a specific workspace. So again, we were cloning a report that existed in my default workspace or the me workspace. I can also do that same type of action, but in a specific workspace. I'm not gonna do it again just because I've already cloned it. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to delete it. So now that we have a report, and let's just say I don't want it, I'm now going to clone that particular report. And so I have the ID, because remember when it sends back to me is a resource that represents a report, and that resource has the ID of the report. So in this situation, I can just take that ID, I can call the delete report method, and then I just pass through the report ID. Keep in mind, when you do a delete operation, nothing's coming back to you. It's just gonna be none. If it will let me, it should let me. It might be freezing up, sometimes it does that. It's gonna time out, isn't it? 
See, it probably doesn't like me doing this, but that's okay. Come on. Come on. Okay, we'll just do it again. I don't know why. Okay, so that's what it was supposed to return. It was supposed to return nothing. Um, I might modify this method to say if the report doesn't exist, then I'll probably send back a message saying report successfully deleted, but I would probably want to make sure that if I query it, I actually get nothing back. So I'll probably work on this one a little bit just to make it, I think, a little bit more informative than just returning nothing, but that's currently how the API works. Okay, additionally, same theme here. If I was able to do it with my default workspace, I can do it with a specific workspace. Again, I don't want to delete that same report, but you can kind of see what's going on here. Okay, so now we get to the fun part, which is exporting a report from a workspace. In our situation, I'm going to export a report from my default workspace. Now, when you export, there's a couple things you need to keep in mind. First of all, there's different ways you can export. Sometimes you can export what is called a default report, which is just simply a PBIX file, so a Power BI file. Now, you could also export it as a specific file format, including PDF, PowerPoint, Excel. I believe there's a few more. I think you could even do, let me check. I wrote this, so shush up. HTML, MHTML, PDF, PNG, PowerPoint document, Excel document, XML, CSV, accessible PDF, Word document. So you're able to export it as multiple file types. However, you are only able to export it as a specific file type if, if and only if you have a premium per capacity account. This will not work if you have a premium per user account or a Power BI Pro account. Again, if you have a Power BI Pro account or a premium per user account, you are only able to export it as a PBIX file, and that is it. So normally how it looks, you call report service, you call the export report method. You then specify the report ID that you want to export. This will, report, this will return some content. Now that content is just a binary content, right? And so what you then do is you take your content and then you open up a new PBIX file. So in this situation, I'm saying go into the folder exports, there's there should be a file called myreportexport.pbix. If there isn't, then create it. That's what this little plus is doing. And more specifically, I want my write mode to be write binary. Write binary. I then specify my file alias or my handler. I call it, I call the write method, and then I just dump my content. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put a two here. I'm gonna run this. Again, hopefully it doesn't freeze. If I go to my exports folder, <gasps> look at that. It's right there. We can try to open it. Um, I haven't tried opening it as a um, in Power BI Desktop. I hope it works. I don't know. There could be a potentially a content encoding issue. I've had that happen before. Did it work? No way. Oh, it did work. Oh my goodness. I didn't think it would work. <laughs> I surprise myself sometimes. So yeah, that's how you would export a report to a PBIX file. Now, same thing, if I was able to do it with my default workspace, you know I can do it with a specific workspace. That is basically what you're doing here. So I'm not gonna do it again, but there is how you would do it for a specific workspace. Finally, this is the one that will not work. So export to file. This one is a little bit different. This is where I can define the file format that I want to have it exported as. Wow, that is horribly misspelled. 
excuse me, one second. My apologies, God. Um, this is where you can specify the file format. And then there's also some configurations where if you have a report configuration or um, the page native report, I have to look this up a little bit more. Um, I haven't been able to do this because I don't have a per capacity um, license, so I'm not spending five grand a month. <laughs> but at some point, I'm hoping they update this. If somebody does have access and they wouldn't mind um, maybe reaching out or something like that, I'd be more than happy to sit down and pick your brain. But it would kind of help just so that way I can kind of help clear up this method. But yeah, anywho, you would just specify your report ID and then again, your file format, export file formats, PDF. Now this one, I'm gonna run it, it's gonna fail. You get an HTTP error. However, um, you should have a logs folder that was configured. And then if you look down here, feature not available error. So that means it was correct. The payload was correct, but it's saying, hey, wait a minute, you don't have a, a premium capacity license, so guess what, you can't use the send point. And I go sad, very, very sad. But with that being said, that does conclude this particular video. So if you have any questions about the report services, feel free to put them down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. Otherwise, we will see you in the next video, which I think is just a channel update with some of the libraries that have been released. So um, I might or might not get to that. But thank you again for watching, everybody. We will see you in the next video.